there's trouble brewing in Hollywood. AI versus artists. Soulless machines regurgitating stories while real people don't have health insurance. At least that's the mainstream narrative. But you know what I'm not seeing in any of these headlines? Artists who use AI. People like me. Creators who've made art for years and years and are now integrating AI into their creative pipelines. Uh, people like Steven Soderbergh, the director of Ocean's Eleven, who said publicly that he's used AI and isn't afraid of it. If you've been on this channel before, you can already tell that today's video is a little bit different. Um, it's not a tutorial on how to use a specific AI tool. I guess it's more of a general suggestion how to handle the future of creativity. That sounds big, but I think it's really important because, especially since last week, I've been more excited than ever before about AI, but also a little bit wary about what's coming. If you're subscribed, you may have already seen the post that made me feel this way. My colleague Tobias here at Storybook Studios and I made the following video using Stable Diffusion, Runway, and a lot of work with traditional tools like After Effects and Blender. Let's take a look. There were limitations with that, of course, but in the end, two people made 90 seconds worth of cinematic footage that would usually have cost millions. And loads of other creatives in this community, like you, have made videos like this. Now, you know me from this YouTube channel as an AI guy, but I'm actually a writer and filmmaker, one who didn't use AI to get here. Now, that doesn't mean I rejected AI when it first came out, because before I heard of any of this controversy, my first contact with AI was incredibly helpful. You see, you don't find success as a writer just by writing good stories, unfortunately. I'd love that if that were true, but you have to actually sell them. So some of us, when we come up with a new idea, we make pitch decks that look something like this. We write a lot of text in them, sure, but we also add visuals to show our clients, usually producers, what a project will feel like. That can be anything like screenshots from existing movies and TV shows that feel similar, or it can be advanced photoshops, illustrations, collages to represent individual scenes from our story. The problem with that is you will never have a real image from your story, just approximations. So imagine how excited I got when Dolly 2 came out, then Mid Journey, then Stable Diffusion. Finally, I could visualize my wildest imaginations exactly how they are in my story within a couple seconds, leaving me more time to focus on my storytelling. These AI tools empowered me right from the start, and they didn't replace anybody. I wasn't hiring illustrators and graphic designers to do this work. It was me doing it much more slowly. So if AI helped me as an artist so much, why is the storyline in the media that artists are fighting AI? Well, because a lot of them are, and for a couple good reasons. Reason one, the data set that these AI models start with. Um, Stable Diffusion is the only one that even made public what data they trained on, so I'm gonna use that as an example, but the other ones are the same. Many of the images used to train Stable Diffusion were by artists who didn't explicitly consent to their use in AI training. It's a common misconception that AIs just mash and collage existing images together. The generated images are completely original, but the frustration is still totally understandable. People can just prompt an artist's name and get their exact style without asking them for permission. That's not cool. Reason two is much more dramatic and personal. Some Hollywood studios want to use people's likenesses, so their faces and bodies, in movies and shows forever after just paying them one day's salary. So that's an artistic and human threat, which is why a lot of the current strikes and press are about that. And reason number three is that even if AIs were 100% trained on consensual art, it would change absolutely nothing about the fact that the effort of manually illustrating or otherwise creating images, or even writing text for that matter, has lost a lot of monetary value. That's indisputable. It's as if someone spent all day cutting out photos and pasting them onto a picture by hand when they could also just use Photoshop and do the same thing in two minutes. 
fewer people can now achieve more work using AI. Important note, this does not devalue art itself as an endeavor. If anything, I've come to appreciate manual creativity more since AI started. But unfortunately, that's not considered in our current economic system. So why am I still excited about this? Isn't this just another big technological revolution where tons of people will lose their jobs due to some shiny, expensive new machine? No, because in this revolution, everybody has the big machine and it's not expensive and nobody can take it away from us because we have it on our computers. I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the video that my colleague Toby brought me into something called Storybook Studios. We're part of a movie and series production company here in Germany that's mostly been making comedies. Team members have also worked on action and science fiction and fantasy films, but those are very difficult to make here in Germany and in Europe as a whole because they're very expensive and the audience is much smaller. But with AI, we can do so much more with so much less. While established Hollywood is fighting about it, AI is empowering countless real working artists to dream bigger and achieve more. That is, if we play fair and set some ground rules. In our AI work here at Storybook, we've decided to take the same approach we've taken to traditional filmmaking, which means play fair and adhere to existing copyright law. That means we don't prompt the names of any real people outside of the public domain. No actors, no artists, no models, and so forth. We also don't prompt any trademarks, any known characters, movie titles, or directing styles. Long term, we'll be training fine-tuned models and Lauras based on film work of artists that will participate in the revenue of our generated productions. And beyond that, we'll go out of our way to develop our own styles. Not just because that's the right thing to do, but because it's fun to do as artists. Why use new tools just to imitate old styles? Pixar didn't try to make 2D animation differently, they invented a whole new format. I think Nico over on Corridor Digital said it best, so I'm going to refer to their video for more thoughts on this topic. But in conclusion, I'm fully convinced that AI will play an essential part in creativity in the future, if it stays in the right hands of artists and storytellers, and if we choose to embrace it. If you disagree with anything I said in this video, comment, please, I'd love to discuss this with you. If you do agree, still comment and tell me your thoughts. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. I'll be back with more in-depth videos in the future, but for now, thank you for watching. I'm Albert Bosazan, and I hope you have fun with AI.